What's up? Hello. We're back. Just another show, episode. Showing out words. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, I'm still recovering from the stag. Yes. This seems like you've just been on a massive <laughs> bender for like two weeks long. <laughs> yeah, for the record, <laughs> we're recording these episodes on the same day. Yes. If you're just joining us and missed last week's episode, and if you did, how are you doing? Yeah, go back go and back listen. And listen. But yeah, so I'm still recovering from the stag, still energised as hell. As you can see. If you could see the, the veins in his eyes right now. <laughs> Bloodshot. Struggling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're going to make an episode for you. We are. We're going to put Let's. one together. We're going to see what comes out of these mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any tales of frivolous activities you need to want to get off your chest? Not particularly. Before we go into the episode? I didn't know this was a confessions episode, but... <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. <laughs> Many at home. Ew. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. No? Are, you, are you good? I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> all right. I was just throwing it out there in case you wanted to throw anything out so there. So should we let people know who we are? Quickly? Yes. I keep forgetting to do this every episode. It's a good job you're here, Jim. Yes, go for it. I'm Wayne Ingram. I'm Jim Yordis. Good. There you go. And we are the Powerful Nonsense crew. Mm. <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Wayne? So today, they're probably tuned out by now. They're like, what are these guys on? Is what? this like, are they been smoking some good <laughs> shit? <laughs> um, so we're talking about uncertainty today. Yes. And why it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. And why what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Is that a song? Don't know. Sounds good. But yeah. We're going to talk about uncertainty and why people need to embrace that and why I think they say nowadays only that we're living in the age of uncertainty. Yeah. Have you heard that phrase? Yeah, I have. And I like it. I think that's a good I thing I think it provides ways. a lot of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I had to just censor myself then. I was going <laughs> to... <laughs> a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, it's rubbish because we don't know what's going to happen. I'm like, it's amazing we don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, balls. And I think at times when there is uncertainty, it means that what's happening is actually a passing of the way we do things. I right. think you're kind of dusting off old ways of doing things and then something new is happening. Mm-hmm. And they say, especially like the millennial generation, we're kind of living on the cusp of a massive change. Obviously, we're saying education no longer fits us. We're saying we don't know how we want to work or what kind of jobs we mm-hmm. want to have. We don't know what the future is going to hold in terms of the jobs that are going to be available. And so it's kind of actually an important time right now to be really settled in the idea that you may constantly be uncertain about where you're going. Are you yawning on air? That's horrendous. That's because you're getting the oxygen to the brain, trying to light up some sort of connections. I'm sorry. It's all right. Or was I just boring you? A bit of both. A bit of both, yeah. Understandable. But yeah, sorry. Carry on. So what I was saying before you rudely yawned in my face... (laughs) (laughs) Was that I think actually nowadays is like the optimal time to get young people, especially millennials, people who are kind of living through this transition. Obviously, there's all these baby boomers who are now retiring and we're kind of going into the workforce. I think we need to understand that actually there's massive change, there's massive uncertainty, but we have to be comfortable just to kind of embrace that and work through that and kind of just go with the flow a bit more, Mm. I think, now. I think back in the day, I think people were so comfortable to kind of know that systemized ways of doing things whereas mm-hmm. nowadays you've got young people who maybe are skipping changing their kind of life life goals every two right. three years and the rules have changed as well you've not like got this simple structure where you go you do this this will happen do this this will happen like there's so much change going on that, that it can't be a simple blueprint of how to live life anymore i don't think yeah i think it's just a boring way to live as well like well, i think that's true if you're just repeating day in day out it's kind of like well groundhog day yeah groundhog day did you did you learn anything? Did you grow? And I think as well, like that's the really key point we want to make. And I think that's probably like um, one of one of the points we've got here is this idea that actually taking on challenges is something that's going to like, when you don't know what's going to happen next, it forces you to kind of, number one, get out of your comfort zone, but also you're going to learn something in a new way. Mm-hmm. And I think in some ways, because we live in the digital age, I think it's so easy to try find out how, how you can kind of... Um, what's the word, sort of restrict how much uncertainty you have because you can Google and you can search, you can find the right, okay, well, if I do this, what's going to be the outcome? And I think we're so programmed to want to know certainty. 
right. that we want to, we, we're so risk averse, which is a natural way to be, but it's kind of like we're in a, in a world and a society that demands that we live in an uncertain time. Mm-hmm. We need to kind of be able to kind of reprogram ourselves so that we get comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Because I do think we can now overthink so much. Oh, yeah. The, was... the ability to overthink has been heightened by technology. Mm-hmm. There was an interesting, again, Art of Charm episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, we always bring up Art of Charm. Always. So check them out. They're good. Um, it was like a mini mini sewed Monday, which mm-hmm. is the new thing they've been doing. And it was uh, the guy that talked about the genie thing, where the, you know, the three wishes, if yeah, you, yeah, what yeah. would people ask for, and the happiness thing. Um, it was the same guy, and he was talking about uh, the decisions made by your gut versus made by your brain. Mm-hmm. And he was basically saying, like, the problem is, is like, we just overthink everything. And we think that if we overthink it, that we're going to come to the best conclusion. Mm-hmm. And the best conclusion isn't always a logical one. Yeah. So you're right. And I just think it restricts, it just restricts what you're going to do because mm-hmm. I think you've got so many people who will just hold off. I think Gary Vee actually had a really good video the other day where he said we're all stuck in student mode. We constantly consume and constantly learn, but mm. we never just embrace and actually just pull the trigger mm. and actually do something. And I think that is because we're so against um, like uncertainty but that's where probably everything you think or want you're hoping to get is on the other side that you have to kind of take that leap. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, I think nowadays it's just, I guess just for our time, we've all been programmed to be so risk averse. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, no, you're in a, there's so much opportunity nowadays that you have to kind of be willing to just say like, you know what, let's see what happens. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time as well for young people nowadays, you've not got much to lose. Mm-hmm. We haven't got the kids in the houses already. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, well, actually, maybe you can like push it for a bit and see what yeah, happens just and like yeah may as well yeah what's there to lose uh-huh. nothing i'll go back and move in with parents or whatever else like it's the worst outcome or something so. yeah 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 there's actually a good quote that you put in the notes that i want to throw out there because i think it kind of sums up the angle we're going to be taking which is from jfk mm-hmm. good old jfk um and he says that nothing worthwhile has ever been accomplished with a guarantee of success Mm-hmm. And I think it's so true. It's kind of like the the adage of well, if it was easy, everybody would do it, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And and I just think that the the sorts of people that listen to this sort of podcast and this sort of content, I think they understand fundamentally that if you're going to try something new and you want to do something different to everyone else and kind of unplug from the, from the nine to five whatever and and live the lifestyle that you want, you're gonna have to take risk. Mm-hmm. And you can't just go in and go, well, that's how it's supposed to be done. And you're going to have to explore new territory. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. I think, yeah, I think and that on that quote especially, I think we are, like, like we said earlier, we want to be able to guarantee what's coming next. Like mm-hmm. you didn't get into acting knowing that you're definitely going <laughs> to... Like it's like yeah. one of those, it's, one of, it's probably one of those hard, like those careers where literally as an actor... There is no guarantee of success, but yeah. you've jumped in because it's where you feel the most growth in you. You're going to mm-hmm. always go for it. And I think it's so tough, I think, for people to have that, like that thought mm-hmm. in their head that you just don't know where it's heading. Yeah. But I well, think... that's usually like with something like that, usually why a lot of people give up mm-hmm. because they go, oh, I just don't know where this is going. Mm-hmm. And I embrace that and I'm like, yeah, but that's exciting. The opportunity yeah. could be just yeah, around yeah, the yeah. corner and my yeah. life could change overnight yeah, yeah. because an opportunity has presented itself. Um, but on the flip side, I could. This could be my lot in life. <laughs> this, <laughs> this could be, be it. it. This could be it. But it's okay to be that because at least you're living in that. You're living with the uncertainty, so you're like sort of surrendered to what will come. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a really like. I think it's quite an empowering way to live that you don't feel threatened by having to do the same thing. It's kind of like me starting when I start new ventures or whatever I go into. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, yes, where will this pull my life? And where will mm-hmm. that take me in that direction? What new things do I need to learn? And who are the people that I now have to meet? Yeah. And I think that's the part that I like about uncertainty is the idea that you're just going to be kicked down in another hole mm-hmm. and you have to figure out what's down there and how you're going to yeah. get back out. Yeah, I like I like the embracing. It's kind of been a, a weird characteristic of mine, particularly seeing as I'm so... I always weigh up consequences. Mm-hmm. But there's a part of me that loves the randomness uh-huh. of things. Yeah. Like the fact that it's not in, in my control, which is very strange for somebody that has anxiety about not having control of a situation. Uh-huh. I'm a walking paradox, I've just realised. <laughs> but there is a part of me that kind of loves that that uncertainty where it's like anything could happen. 
But I think that's our, like, I think, even going back to that gut, I think that's our intuitive way of being. I think as humans, our natural, we're so averse, but we know that the evolution and the evolving of mm-hmm. us as a human species is those bits where you just say, all right, I'm going to push that button and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we've come so far. We've been so, like, cotton walled that we're so afraid to push it. But the people who are creating the technology, the driverless cars, right. the internet, everything else that you look at is somebody who embraced uncertainty where everyone's saying that's madness you're never going to get against the mm-hmm. petrol companies and this is mental it's never going to happen and these people do it and then like oh that works better and i think that's the people who are going to do amazing in the world and all people who change things whether it's in charities as well they're people that i think people have like forgot about those people who look there it's never going to be good for them they've got it rubbish mm-hmm. but they're the people that say you know what they will change what's currently there and they're willing to risk uncertainty on the benefit on the belief inside them that they know they're doing the right thing yeah so yeah yeah no, i agree and i think as well the thing that i love about uncertainty is it it forces you to grow yeah and it forces you to learn new things and it forces you to explore new ideas like i think it's richard branson that says just say yes and then work out how the hell you're going to do it and i think it that as a a technique of growth of yeah. just your uh, knowledge, yeah. your uh, experiential growth, your mental growth, your physical growth sometimes is depending on what it is. I, I think there's there's nothing better than just throwing yourself into something mm-hmm. and just seeing what happens and seeing like challenging yourself and kind of going, how am I going to get out of this one? Yeah, my sister's like had this, uh, I've been talking to her about this recently and like she's on Instagram and she gets loads of followers and she does like makeup tutorials and stuff like that. And she's recently been getting like a load of people saying, oh, can you come and do makeup for me? Mm-hmm. And she's like, how can I say yes to that? I'm not, I haven't got the certificate. I haven't got, and I'm like, well, they came to you on the base. They see that you do your own well. But she's like, oh yeah, but then what if I go there and it's not right? And then if I say yes, and I'm just like, look, if you say yes, something's going to switch in your brain. You'd be like, oh, shit, I am doing makeup for, it was like for someone's wedding, wanted her to do right. it, or something like that. It's a big deal. But you know that if it's that much of a big deal and you say yes, your brain switches on and says, okay, how are we going to make this happen now? Mm-hmm. And then you suddenly put everything into place, whereas most people have that kind of unsettling, like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And then that just stops them in their tracks. Whereas mm-hmm. I think when you say yes, you have to figure it out. You just and I do that with some of my video work stuff. I'm like, I was like, oh, do you do graphics? I'm like, not really, but I'll say yes, and I'll I'll know it will force me to find the right person right. who does do that. Right. Yeah. So there is that. It just really does kick you up the ass to get going. And like Richard Branson says, like you just have to make you find the right people mm-hmm. because now you're already committed to something, and your brain's like, okay, this is happening. Right. And I'm sure that's something biological or something that makes you. Yeah, I think I think it's got a lot on. to do with adrenaline and things like that, and it kind of just makes you. It kind of. I think as well what it does is it kind of flicks a switch in your mind and it goes, right, you can't go on autopilot now. Mm. You have to think about what you're doing. Yeah. And I think that automatically your brain goes, oh, hello. Yeah. I'm exploring new territory here. And, yeah. the, and, and, and there's something really exciting I think about it might that. be as well that it's a risk to your safety. It sees this as, yeah. a, as a threat. Like you've said yes and you can't do it. It's like, okay, this is a threat. How do I make this feel comfortable again? I get the stuff done. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it must be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Strange. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a good spot to take a break. Yes. Let's so let's take, take a, a break. break. Thank our sponsor. And we'll be back in a jiffy. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. We have returned. Hello. We're back. Thanks for sticking about. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, there's something you wanted to talk about, Jim. Yes. A big point that you wanted to discuss. Yes. Which I think is kind of 
You've just explained it to me, and I think it's really cool, actually. I like your thinking, so cool. go for it. Yeah, so the main point I wanted to make on this idea of like embracing uncertainty is I've had experience with anxiety. You've said you've had anxiety before in the past, and I think one thing that a lot of people struggle with is that they get to that place where they want to do something that they haven't done before, they don't know what's going to come out of it, mm-hmm. and then suddenly they get this sort of anxious feeling. But my own story with dealing with anxiety was this idea that I remember when I was at uni, I used to like work out like crazy in my mm-hmm. room, like every day doing like push ups and lifting weights. And then one day I literally felt like my heart was going crazy and I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I remember calling Wayne into my room. I was like, Wayne, you've got to take me to the hospital. My heart's going like crazy. And I think you were like, I don't know what your reaction was. You were like, okay, okay, I'll yeah, take you. Like, so sure, we, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> yeah, so we like shot down to the hospital. I'm thinking, fuck, I'm I tried like to calm heart. you down first of all. I was yeah. like, are you sure? You're like, <laughs> just relax, breathe. Yeah, 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 but my heart felt like it was going like 100 miles an hour. So I was like, look, let's go hospital, get it checked out, see if I'm okay. So I went there. And then they checked me out, did all the ECG, put all the little things around your chest. And I was like, no, it looks like you've had a panic attack. You probably worked yourself up exercising and then you panicked yourself. So I was like, okay, fair enough. Over, go home. And then what happened is there, because I suddenly had this massive like height and anxiety, my brain had now related exercising to panic attacks. And I love exercise. I love keeping fit. And so I had a bit of a, I was a bit of a problem that the idea that I wanted to exercise, but every time I did, I would have a panic attack. Mm-hmm. And so I think over time I'd go to the gym I'd start training and then suddenly I'd feel my heart going a bit like pounding as it does in the gym and then in my head I would be saying is that me being like strenuous and I'm getting my heart going fast or strenuous Mm -hmm. or I'm having another panic attack is this anxiety and so then I'd freak myself out like run out of the gym thinking I'm dying I'm like oh crap I need to get out when you get anxiety you have to just get out of a space Mm -hmm. and so over time and I was getting so annoyed with myself because I wanted to train but every time I did I was like freaking the hell out and so But over time, I kept just saying to myself, look, I love training. I've got to keep doing it. It's good for my health. If I let this fear stop me, I'm going to stop training. I'm going to get unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And so each time I'd go to gym, I'd get into that panic. I could feel the panic attack coming. And when it comes, I'd just sit with it, relax and know that it's passing. And I think it's it's what I think is really important for other people who are kind of embracing uncertainty. On the other side of me training, I thought I was going to die. Literally thought I was going to have a heart attack or something every time I panicked. But because of that, and because I decided actually, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to work through it. I'm going to surrender to the feeling. It actually started to subside. So I'd go to the gym, have a bit of a panic, calm myself down and train again. And then I'd have another panic sometimes after that. And then I'd calm myself down again. But I'd keep going back. And over time, I kept building it up. And then before long now, I don't really get it. I have I do get it every maybe once every, I don't know, if I felt like I've not slept well one day. And then mm. I train and so I get a bit panicky, but I can calm myself down. And it's this idea that, very much like embracing uncertainty that you're going to have this panic feeling but it's only when you keep doing it you keep working through this panic feeling that it's kind of like you've got to think of it like a graph if you keep going up this graph and every time you panic you go sliding back down the same side you're never going to see what the other side's like and so with anxiety it's really important to kind of get that peak where you feel like oh like shit's hitting the fan you're going to die it feels terrible but you keep working over it and you slide down the other side and soon enough that graph gets smaller mm-hmm. and smaller until you now it's fine and it's okay and, and for you to do yeah, it. Yeah, because you realise that, that that peak of anxiety doesn't mean that bad shit is coming. Yeah. And that's that's the really, really weird thing about it is, it is it's always this uncertainty that creates this anxiety, but it's because you're not letting yourself deal with the uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And when you do just kind of embrace that uncertainty and you go, right, okay, well... It's gonna make me feel like shit, but let's see what happens. Yeah. You know, you kind of get to the other side and you go, "Oh, it's okay. I'm alive. I'm still fine. Nothing yeah. happened." And then you go, "Okay, well, maybe that was a one-off." And then you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you do it again and again yeah. and again. And then after a while, you start to go, "Oh," because I think the thing is, particularly with with anxiety, and I think that the trap that I find myself falling into all of the time is that, and it kind of goes to this overthinking thing that we've talked about. Mm-hmm is the human brain is wired to go, uh, if X, then Y. Yeah, yeah. And so if you find a pattern because you've overthought it and you've seen a pattern that isn't even there... Yeah. Because you've over analyzed and you're everything. And solidifying that. Your neurons, your your brain is creating that myelin sheath, right. which is saying making it thicker, quicker right. path to that reaction happening. Right, exactly. And your brain goes on autopilot, goes, when this happens, I need to be ready because yeah. that's going to happen. And that's not always the case. And, and it's about them rewiring your brain to go, well, hang on. 
just because this has happened mm-hmm. doesn't it's a possibility that that could happen but mm-hmm. it's not a guarantee that that's mm-hmm. going to happen but your brain's constantly looking for this formula to say well when that happens that will happen yeah i'll press that button to panic and alarm uh-huh. you get out of that situation and that's why like you say working through that kind of dip when you come on the other side, you start encoding that, oh, I get panicked, but once I cal- once I get panicked, I calm down again. And in the end, it says, actually, it's more efficient if we just calm. Yeah. And we don't do the panic because that uses up a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, I think one thing to mention is as well that, like, I think anxiety is the biggest mental health issue amongst yeah. young people. Yeah. They've already got the stats for that. I think a lot of people suffer from that. And I think, but that anxiety can come in, like, doing things that are, like you say, if you're doing something that's uncertain to you, that causes anxiety. People find it even just going to certain locations causes anxiety. And so I think we need to understand that we need to get... I think one of the great books I read is called The Pathway to Surrender. And I think it's this idea that whenever you are trying to embrace something that's really uncertain is that you can learn to sort of surrender the feeling. Like your brain will go and do its own autopilot thing that you say. Mm-hmm. But if you just let go of it, are you because you're telling yourself the story underneath that, mm-hmm. which is why people don't do things anyway, where they don't embrace uncertainty because they've already the brain's cleverly created the story of what will happen if I try this, all the worst outcomes, but where you just surrender to the idea that you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's such a relief. And yeah. I think that's what people need to get used to doing is understand that stop trying to guess the future. Most time you get it wrong. Every time you think something bad's going to happen, it usually doesn't. Mm-hmm. And then you survive and you come to the other end. If you can just surrender those feelings, I think you'll be more likely to take action in whatever it is you want to do. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, which I think actually lines up to this anti-fragility point mm-hmm. quite well. Um, and anti-fragility being like, it, it, it's almost that malleability, mm-hmm. the ability to be able to adjust really quickly. Um, because I think that the, the, the way that we often live our lives is because it's so risk averse. It's a survival instinct to be like, no, don't risk anything. Because if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Whereas actually, if the environment changes and you're not used to quick change, you're actually putting yourself at risk. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm trying to think of just something... From an evolutionary standpoint, let's look at it this way, right? So there's an island where there's one species on there. This is a very simplified version. There's one species on there. They haven't had to defend themselves. They just eat the grass, right? And then um, us humans come along... (laughs) We pop a, a couple of predators on there and then we fuck off. <laughs> Suddenly, those animals that haven't had to defend themselves are going to find themselves quickly extinct unless mm-hmm. they, ad- they adapt and find a way to defend themselves very quickly because the environment has changed where they now have to defend themselves but have never defended themselves before. Yeah, and I think we can relate that to the culture we're living in. We know that so much is changing in the way that we do work and how the internet has changed everything. Mm-hmm. Globalisation, we spoke about in many episodes... And I think it's what's causing a lot of panic in people is that inability to be anti-fragile, to embrace the uncertainty. And so, yeah, I think it's, 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 I think it's so key for our generation to kind Definitely. of... And I think we're getting there as well. I do think a lot more people we speak to is kind of like, they're like, oh, I'm going to... I don't like my job. I'm switching up careers. I'm mm-hmm. relearning. I'm going back to university. Um, whatever they want to do. And I think... I think it will happen naturally. People, mm-hmm. if you don't become more sort of anti-fragile or be able to embrace uncertainty, you'll just be kicked off the yeah. off the cliff that you are forced to kind of embrace that eventually yeah. somehow. I think of the, like, the people that are like, oh, you know... And, and I understand their, their thinking, because it is annoying. But when they're like, oh, you know, I, I've, I've just given up on this social media thing because every month is a new, a new one and I just... It's too much time and effort to be having multiple accounts on multiple things. And I'm like... Okay, I understand that logic, but you have to at least be able to go, yeah, I can use that. Mm -hmm. So just put a little bit of time into experimenting with it because at the rate that technology moves now, whereas 10 years ago, you could probably get away being like, no, I'm not going to be on all that stuff. But the rate that technology moves, like I was just watching um, on the stag do, my best mate's brother, who's 21, right? And all his communication, all of it, was on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Like, not WhatsApp, not Facebook Messenger, not text. It was all Snapchat. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Like, I thought I was pretty, like, tuned in, <laughs> right? But clearly not. Uh-huh. Because that's all they're communicating on. And in my mind, I'm going, yeah, but then you can't see it. 
<laughs> like, what if you need to refer back to that later? <laughs> um, but that's just the way that they're functioning now and they're yeah. communicating. And, and that's in a few years' time, that will have changed and it will be something else. And it's just that ability to dive in and go, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. And I think that's the, the problem that we now have as a generation is the fact that you, you are going to get left behind very, very quickly. Like, there's six years difference between this guy and me. Six years. And I'm like, how mm-hmm. are you? That makes no sense. Yeah. And, and so you need to be able to adapt very quickly. So just keep putting yourself into those in certain situations just so you've got this kind of the skill set where you can kind of tap into it. And yeah, you're going to have to learn it very quickly if it becomes... It's about... I think it's about having minimal investment in things in a way. So you've got that ability, whether it's, you know, technology or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's about just occasionally testing yourself on these various different skill sets. Yeah. Just so that you can, you do have the ability and you're you not there going... of them. You don't have to have deep knowledge of right, them. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. Kind of minimal, basic level skill. And then when you need it, then at least you're, you're a step ahead of everybody else because you've already given it a go. Yeah, you don't want to be like your nan with her, her first phone now and you're going to be like that with like social media in like a year's time. Do you know what though, what's <laughs> scary though is I feel like I'm... Getting you know, it. <laughs> I, I feel like I've, I've got this technology thing down, right? Yeah. And I always said to myself, I'm not going to be like my grandparents where I don't have a clue what's happening with technology, but that's a lot more difficult than it appears but to that's be why to keep stick, up don't they we kind of like we get comfortable with that one social media platform mm-hmm. and then now everyone's on something else like oh crap and then mm-hmm. we might two years down the line you're all over snapchat only right suddenly something like that but the last point i really want to make before we wrap things up is this idea that if you there's a trade-off always if you're always going to be though we want to embrace uncertainty what you're saying is you're going to give up to fear and I think the flip side of fear is the idea that what opportunities are you missing out on because right. of fear? Mm-hmm. So it's this opportunity versus fear conundrum that people are in is that what are you going to now miss out because you're not willing to embrace uncertainty? Mm-hmm. And I think that's something <laughs> for our generation that I think is really important. We've got loads of opportunity out there, but if we're stuck with that kind of fear mindset, making up these um, stories of why it's not going to happen, we're never going to be able to take full advantage of the great technology and the opportunities that we have today, really. Yeah. Nicely put, Jim. I don't know if that was, but that's it, it kind sounded of, good. It might have, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, shall we wrap it up there then? I think that's a nice point. Unless there's anything we've no, missed. No, no, I think that's fine. I just think yeah, people just need to understand that the world demands people to think in uncertain ways. Right. I think that's where innovation comes from mm-hmm. as well, and I think it's where you'll find the most fun. You'll challenge yourself, and you'll experience more things mm-hmm. in life. You get the most out of yourself. Yeah. Embrace the uncertainty. Don't fear it exactly cool cool so we'll wrap up there um as always if you're watching on youtube and you've not subscribed please subscribe and hit the thumbs up and uh, also oh you can get show notes by the way all the reasons because you mentioned a few books so you okay. can get all the links to the books and stuff uh powerful forward slash 124 correct for this episode um and also if you're listening on itunes on the podcast app then please leave a review five stars or more would be greatly appreciated Uh, so thanks guys for tuning in and um, we'll catch you next time see you later